I've had the PS5 Pro Console 5 days now. In a few days time I'll be doing my week or so full review on it. I want to add a thorough look at the machine and giving it a test in all sorts of different areas. But until then I'm just going to go over a few of the things I really like about the machine and a few things which I really think could be a little bit better. Well, the first thing I like is the most basic thing of all, and that is how the machine looks. As soon as I unpacked it, I kind of loved the look of it straight away. It felt smaller, sleeker, lighter than the original, and I really like that. And I prefer the colour of this as well. Some people may not have noticed, but this is a slightly muted white on the Pro. On the original console, it was a very bright white, and I actually prefer this slightly muted white. And those fins as well across the middle makes it look really, really good. And then, yeah, overall, I love the look of the PS5 Pro. Another thing I really like about the PS5 Pro is Game Boost. Now, I wasn't expecting this to be anywhere near this good. I mean, this is Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's an old PS4 game, but take a look at it. It is so good on the Pro. It's just a bit bonkers, really. It's like the whole thing's been given a, a big polish. It's like it's got a resolution jump. The frame rate's better. Everything about it is just massively improved from the already brilliant original. But this is just Star Wars Battlefront 2 on steroids, basically. It's absolutely fantastic looks really really good really happy with it i know some people are thinking yeah but why if you've got ps5 pro would you want to start playing ps4 games again but <clears throat> when they look as good as this you don't mind it's like you actually revel in how magnificent they look now and things like this and this is like a look a different game and i'm really really liking these playstation 5 pro enhanced games over a hundred announced now and tons of them at launch look really really good right off the bat like f1 2024 here looks absolutely superb those extra ray tracing effects still at 60 frames a second make it just a cut above the base version for me really really good so much so in fact that i've been playing this for now for like a few days and i actually tried to go back to the base version the other day just as a comparison and i sort of couldn't really play it, it just looked for want of a better way of describing it kind of cartoony now just much more unrealistic because they've just got so used to the way the lighting looks in in this version it really is that much better let's just go through the uh, tunnel here because this one of the parts that looks really good compared to the base version much more realistic lighting really like this and yeah ratchet and clank another one that looks absolutely fantastic and with more to come as well i'm really looking forward to all these pro enhanced games Speaking of PS5 Pro Enhanced games, even games that haven't officially been given a Pro Enhancement are just that much better on the PS5 Pro. Take Tekken 8 here, for example. It's just a better game on the PS5 Pro. It looks better, the resolution's better. It just plays that little bit smoother. It's just a little bit sleeker overall, and it's a really nice surprise to me because this is happening across the board on all PS5 games. Really nice little but worthwhile improvement. So if you fancy continuing or replaying some of your favourite PS4 games, then get ready for a surprise with Game Boost, because some of them look so much better. It is just crazy. Love Game Boost. Even games in VR are just a little bit crisper, that little bit cleaner, and it seems like they've all been given a little bit of a boost, courtesy of that little jump in CPU power. It doesn't seem like much, but it certainly is effective in all types of games. Really, really happy with this. The other thing I'm really enjoying about the PS5 Pro as well is the additional internal storage. Comes with two terabytes now of standard game storage, which is a lot more than the 825 you got, I think it was, on the base PS5. Now, I know you could upgrade that on the base PS5, but it's not something I got around to ever doing. I just made do with basically shifting games backwards and forwards if I needed to between the external hard drive and the internal PS5 storage. But with this two terabytes of storage, I pretty much shouldn't have to do that anymore. So that is a really nice thing that I'm enjoying with the PS5 Pro. Right now onto a couple of things which are actually preferred on the base PS5 and the first thing is the front of the machine and I mean that regarding available sockets because on the front of the original machine you had one USB Type-A and one USB Type-C. USB Type-C was really convenient for PSVR 2 and things like that and the front USB really useful for doing what I need to do like plugging a microphone and things like that and I used to use it for a joystick like games like Tekken 8 and things like that as well so just being able to plug in a joystick on the front of the machine really quick and convenient but that's gone now and there's two USB type C's which for me is actually less practical because the thing is I know you can get adapters but I don't really want to do that because it looks ugly with an adapter thing 
sticking out and it puts more strain on the socket as well if you're constantly unplugging that and plugging it in directly rather than unplugging the whole thing and changing the adapter over every time which again is exactly isn't exactly slick so for me that is a bit of a bit of a pain that i'm not a huge fan of the two usb c's on the front but i'll work a way around it it's just a little bit impractical like reaching around the back of the machine right now to plug in the microphone and things like that it's supposed to be a the pro console would have been so bad to actually just leave the usb type a there and add in an extra c just so it's just better because it's the, the pro console i'm sure that couldn't have cost exactly a fortune to do that and that would have been um the best of all worlds for me but hey it is what it is but the the other thing which i don't think is as good as the ps5 uh, base model i say not as good but it's an inevitable change basically due to the, the basic fact we've got a more powerful machine and that is the fan noise when you're playing certain games on the ps5 pro is noticeably more audible than it was on the base model and i'm not talking about playing pro enhanced games where you're getting all that extra oomph from the machine i'm talking about uh, games that are played on the ps4 that are pretty basic games like gems of war and on the base ps4 that didn't cause any fan noise whatsoever I mean, the PS5 base model was like a grave, literally. You just couldn't even hear it when playing a game like Gems of War. But I was surprised to actually hear the fan, you know, spinning up and making a slight background noise while playing a game like Gems of War, which obviously the PS5 Pro should be able to handle absolutely massively easily. So why does the fan even need to need to be going? It's a bit of a surprise, that one, but it is what it is. Obviously, a more powerful machine it gives out more power more power means more heat more heat means more cooling so the fan tends to spin a little bit more often but yeah you can actually hear it now so that was a bit of a surprise to me which i wasn't actually expecting i was, I was kind of expecting the opposite in a way until i thought about it a bit more but hey it is what it is and once you get used to it it's actually not too bad i don't really notice it anymore uh, so all is good on that but yeah that's the two minor things which i actually did prefer on the ps5 base unit and i can get used to them the two usb c's are like i say a little bit irritating oh god what happened there <laughs> oh god Woo we're doing a bit of um slidey stuff now but yeah i i will get used to it but um i'll probably have to buy a little adapter thing to get over that usb type c issue which is a little bit annoying but apart from that it's all um happy days and like i said the fan noise is something you get used to pretty quickly oh this is rather spectacular but there it is there's the video i've got my full one week review coming up in a, a couple of days time so hit the look and subscribe button if you fancy seeing a, a bit of that i'm gonna give a no no hole with barred honest opinion of the whole thing from what i think of the box opening to the, basically the whole thing basically uh the whole like first week experience and what i thought of it but there's a video if you enjoyed it be really cool if you bash that like and subscribe button it really does help but most of all thanks for watching and i'll catch you again in the next one bye for now